sir? Yes, Kevin. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, afternoon ma'am. Take a seat. Yes. Thank you, sir. Zunaid Ahmed. Yes, sir. Give a brief introduction about yourself. Sir, I belong to Bijnor district in Uttar Pradesh. I've done my primary education from Aligarh Muslim University. Then I came to Noida. Uh, from there, I did my graduation in electronics communication engineering. Currently, I'm in Indian Revenue Service. Uh, I'm under training in Faridabad. Um, you have not mentioned that in your def. Actually, uh, when it got allocated till that time, it was not there. Okay. So they tell me you now that you are a member of uh, the civil services. Why it is happening that engineers are aspiring to become civil servants only? They are not uh, pursuing their future in uh, the core engineering. So the first thing is uh, the <laughs> employability issue. I'll mm -hmm. say uh, the kind of engineering gra graduates we are producing, their employability is very less. Second thing is, uh, as an engineer, uh, we can uh, help in the administration uh, in a lot of ways. That's okay. That's a personal choice. But my concern is more of the engineers getting uh, passed out from the universities, engineering colleges, and prestigious engineering colleges, and they're still <coughs> choosing to opt for the civil services. So apart from serving the country and all that, what is the, what is the real reason? Now that you are a member of the civil services, that is why I am asking you this question. So the respect which is associated with the civil services that attracts a lot of graduates and engineering uh, graduates are uh, also because of this they are entering. And I'll say uh, in the kind of uh, exam uh, civil services has turned into it is uh, in a way engineering graduates are uh, able to come into this uh, the prelims paper which is there uh, the logical reasoning which is coming up it is helping a lot of engineering graduates to clear okay. this exam but don't you think there is a perception about indian bureaucracy that everything is not good with indian bureaucracy so what are the factors worrying indian bureaucracy or indian civil services so first is the generalized nature of uh, uh, the people who are getting recruited. They are not from any specific background which is required. For example, Indian Foreign Service requires uh, domain expertise in international relations and other things, but generalized uh, recruitment is there. This is a, an issue. Then at the top level also expertise is needed, uh, which is not coming up because of that lateral entry has been started uh, by the government. And obviously, the third is the corruption, uh, which is there in the bureaucracy. That is also one major issue. So, in your opinion, how can India reform its civil services? One is the recruitment uh, that is there. So, what changes. is your suggestion? Only specialists should be inducted for a specialized posts. Uh, no, sir. I'll not say specialist, but uh, certain background is required. Uh, for example. Uh, if you are opting for uh, Presently, administrative... The government of India is giving you a wide uh, platform. Any graduate can write this examination and the best talent is selected. Yes, sir. You want to further curtail that freedom and transform it into what? Sir, uh, for example, I am in Indian Revenue Service. So, uh, there is a lot of auditing accounts and taxation related issues in uh, IRS. It takes a lot of time for a general candidate to understand th those things. But in our batch, certain CAs are there who can easily uh, understand what is taxation is all about. So uh, a background in uh, that subject will help in uh, getting these services uh, and recruitment in a better way. That's what uh, I'm telling you. This is what you personally feel. But that, that, that expertise is required in any service in uh, the government of India. Yes, sir. Be it uh, income tax, be it your civil accounts, be it even Indian police service or Indian administrative service. So how do you s differentiate between the services? This one area which you have experienced. Yes, sir, one I can, we can categorize mainly, I will say in three parts. One is the administration part where Indian administrative service comes in. The other is the policing part and the rest are the taxation uh, matters. So in these three domains, if we divide uh, the services and take people from that background uh, and they, uh, we can ask them to opt for e either of the three. So there we can get expertise. What is your personal opinion on the, the age eligibility for writing the examinations? Uh, sir, I think uh, the current age uh, is 32 years and 35 years. It's very high. It should be reduced. 
because first thing is that uh, a person who is getting recruited at that age uh, sorry if a person is preparing and is not getting recruited he has no other option left for uh, any other uh, job second thing is till that time 27 28 29 uh, the mindset and uh, the principles of a person gets established and it's uh, very difficult to mold that person according to the requirements of administration so if we are recruiting a person at a very young age we can mold them according to the needs of administration so in this way reduction in age uh, will so help so you in your opinion government of india has been acting more on, more on populist policies than the real needs of the bureaucracy uh, sir i'll say because uh, a large group of uh, students are there uh, who will protest against this thing and it's very difficult for the govern- government in power to take such decision but the committee which was constituted to look into the reforms of civil services they rec- it recommended that uh, gradual reduction in age should be there and it should be brought down to 26 that is the ideal age okay thank you zunaid what is the contribution of arab geographers in the development of this discipline so uh, the classical period if we talk about geography Uh, the na- navigation part uh, it was mostly done by the arab geographers they were traders and they circumnavigated the whole world and uh, found out routes connecting to different cities then uh, the monsoon uh, it it is also said that was di- discovered by the arab geographers uh, arab traders uh, the trade winds which were there they used to trade according to those trade winds and monsoon was discovered uh, and uh, this cartography map making Uh, was also a major domain where arab geographers worked upon al balaki al masudi these uh, are some famous but most of the credits are claimed by european thinkers isn't it a kind of misappropriation of uh, knowledge and claim sir i think uh, the recording of the incidents uh, they were done in a better way by uh, the european geographers so because of that uh, they claim that most of the things were discovered by them but now uh, in the post modern geography when uh, we are studying uh, the credit is being given to all the people who contributed to this uh, domain sir in different parts of the world in different languages people call, talk about kiamat apocalypse pralay mahapralay were they referring to a major climate change phenomenon i think sir yes because in the movies in the culture which we talk about uh, the issue of uh, sea level rise and the submergence of island and countries it, it, it climate change is a um, major reason climate change will be a major reason for it so that's what you know, i don't want to so can into. we uh, uh, say that climate change is a, uh, can be blamed only on industrialization and rising population and pollution climate change may take place due to a natural uh, change in the course of paradigm and order of the universe uh, yes sir uh, if we read geography uh, we can say climate change is a natural phenomena it has happened in the past like ice ages are there when the temperature got reduced and after that a warm phase was there and we uh, it is said that we are in uh, the transitionary period of ice age but the pace at which it is happening now that is a major concern for us Uh, certain reports are there ipcc report is there which says that gl- glaciers are melting at a rapid rate sea level rise 0.13 inches uh, in magnetic field uh, is region. also shifting somebody is claiming how do we know that magnetic field is shifting and what are the implications sir paleomagnetism is a thing in geography which talks about this shift in uh, magnetic field the rocks uh, which are there Uh, which comes out uh, mid uh, in the mid uh, atlantic ridge uh, the alignment of uh, the particles it is according to the mag- mag- magnetic field of the earth so when we studied those rocks we found that in the recent years it has changed but uh, we cannot uh, say with proof that it has happened because of uh, some climate change or thing because it it's a process which has happened in the past also so study is going on to ensure that whether it is the effect of uh, climate change uh, or it's a natural pro- process because uh, this magnetic cycles they do change after a period of time some countries are uh, producing gas and other uh, m- m- ores uh, in the north pole region and that is disturbing the entire ice cap there 
Uh, what kind of implications are there in the seasonal pattern due to these human activities? Sorry, sir. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Zonath. Yes, sir. Zonath, you uh, studied from AMU initially and uh, even your current uh, address suggests that you uh, have some connection with Jamia, Jamia Milia Islamia. Recently, we have seen uh, hostilities uh, against both these institutions, uh, AMU as, as well as Jamia. Uh, uh, it's not the case with India only. The fact is that uh, such uh, uh, attack is visible in, uh, uh, in many, many countries. In India, it is more so. Uh, what do you believe uh, uh, is the reason of hostility against diversity, particularly against uh, the minorities? Uh, particular to the against minority against Muslims to be precise sir the first thing is uh, the erosion of culture which uh, recently attack happened in New Zealand and the theory which he gave was the great replacement that their culture is being eroded by the invaders and uh, by the migrants who come in so certain section of people feel that uh, there is a threat from uh, the other community and because of that they take in. Second, I'll say that uh, particularly about AMU and Jamia, the reservation policy which is there, uh, the uh, these are minority institutes and they don't provide re reservation. So because of that, there was a backlash and incidents like Jinnah portrait was there in AMU and uh, due to it, a backlash happened. But I think uh, this is more of political in nature. Uh, whenever elections comes in, these kind of issues arise. Uh, in general, I don't think there is such an issue. Sir. Okay. Zunath, you did your electronics and communication engineering. Uh, uh, also, you are a study, uh, student of uh, geography. You will be able to answer it properly. This uh, electronic waste has become quite a huge problem. And there seems to be actually no set protocol that ensures that electronic waste can, we can actually get rid of electronic waste uh, properly. Do you believe that uh, uh, electronic uh, um, uh, comforts we are deriving, uh, um, they are more uh, of a trouble rather than uh, uh, convenience? So, with coming of technology, certain problems also come. This is with uh, e-waste also. Technically, tell me, what is, uh, say you have microprocessors. What are the problematic part in microprocessor so that it is so difficult to um, uh, uh, safely dispose it? Sir, so the semiconductors, chips which are integrated on um, the micro uh, processors and microcontrollers, they, the disposal of those things is a major problem because... But they are natural um, products, so they will decay naturally, isn't it? No, sir, the handling of those uh, e-waste is also a major issue. In India, if we say 90 percent is being handled by the un unorganized sector. So there a major issue is there, 18 lakh tons of e-waste is being generated annually and how we manage that e-waste that is a bigger problem than uh, getting it generated. But the e-waste management rules which have come in, they have provided for extended producer responsibility wherein who is the manufacturer of uh, the electronic products, they have a responsibility towards the waste. Then uh, the electronic components which are there, everything is covered under e-waste and states have been given the responsibility, the municipal authorities to work in tandem with uh, the uh, central government. So these ways are there, but I think the three R's which you talk about, reduce, reuse and recycle, they can help a lot in uh, e-waste handling. It is also said that uh, one is a tangible e-waste which is visible, but there is a huge amount of data also which needs to be uh, uh, destroyed, but uh, it keeps piling and uh, taking up resources at uh, um, different clouds and uh, uh, individual hard disks. Do you believe that uh, that is also going to be problem someday? We have huge data which we may not be knowing, but will be misused or uh, be, will be piling. Yes, sir. Uh, it is being said that data is the new oil of 21st century and we have seen instances where this data is being misused. In uh, Facebook, it says that uh, it can influence uh, the elections of 60 countries. Then uh, similar kind of things are there where data is big commercial companies, they are uh, profiling the customers and selective products they are putting up on their screens. So there is an issue of uh, this data. Uh, that's the reason why data protection, uh, draft data protection bill came in 
BHA Krishna committee was constituted and the measures uh, which is, uh, they said that security of data consent related to consent there should be explicit consent from uh, the persons from whom data is collected then uh, one thing is coming up that right to be forgotten should be there if you are providing data then individual should have the right to be forgotten from the servers so that is also a new thing which is coming up so this uh, this new issue will be tackled if these things are implemented. thank you Junaid, yes, sir. you are from UP. Yes, ma'am. Tell me three exclusive problems of UP. Ma'am, the first thing I'll say is uh, the governance part, administration. Uh, law and order issue uh, is a major one, the policing. Uh, the second thing I'll say is the rural distress. It is there in the other parts also, but uh, a population of uh, 19 crores and mostly engaged in agriculture. So it has become a major issue there. And the third is the industrial activity uh, because resources, mineral resources are not there in UP. So because and uh, electricity and other things are very costly. So business investment is not uh, that much. So because of that, uh, the GDP of UP is not up, up to its potential. So these are the three things which I... And what do you think about the policy of UP government to uh, have this uh, shooting in the leg? Uh, encounters yes. ma'am uh, ma uh, this is a reactive reaction I'll say uh, to solve the problem uh, but according to me it will not properly solve the problem because uh, encounters in, in itself uh, uh, has a negative connotation that police uh, are killing the criminals that is not the job of police Judici judiciary is there to decide uh, who is right and who is wrong and Supreme Court has given certain guidelines in uh, encounters so that need to be taken uh, care of and more focus should be there on the community policing which is an essential part of uh, police rather than uh, killing the criminals so that will help in improving the scenario okay uh, what is the sex ratio of Uttar Pradesh 919 919 uh, per thousand uh, men 919 girls per thousand it's, it's of complete India or UP you, 940 is of India, 940 women per thousand men in, in, in UP is 919 as far as I remember. Okay. And what about in Muslim community? Sorry ma'am. You are not aware? Okay. Uh, do you think that India is becoming intolerant? No ma'am, I will not say intolerant. I will say because of the huge diverse, diversity and pluralism which is there in India. There is always a conflict of ideas. Uh, we can see from history to medieval to the present times. So uh, these ideas when they are in conflict, uh, they show up as if there is some kind of intolerance. But this is the richness of India that conflicting ideas are there. And uh, I read one quote that in India it is never about uh, the choice between chaos and stability it is always about manageable and unmanageable chaos so our chaos is very much manageable okay so you as an electronics engineer tell me what are the effects of solar flares on communication gadgets so ma'am the telecommunication system which is there uh, the solar fl flares uh, they affect uh, this system uh, the navigation satellites which are there uh, this get impacted and also uh, the animals, uh, their why, navigation. Why does it affect? The frequencies on which they work upon, they get into, uh, they, go, they get affected because of the solar fl flares. Okay. And that's what. Uh, what books do you read? Non-fiction I've uh, written. Recent. Tell me some names of some books. Ma'am, recently I read Men's Search for Meaning in Life. Uh, it was about a doctor who was in the Nazi camp and how he survived that camp and how he helped the people there, Victor E. Frankel. Then uh, ha Money and Muscle Power in Indian Politics, uh, it was written by uh, Melan Vashna. Okay. Uh, it was about how uh, crime is paying up in Indian politics. Then I also read this uh, Professor Kancha Elayas, few books created controversy in Delhi University, uh, Why I am not a Hindu, uh, Buffalo Nationalism. So the Dalit literature, uh, he gave a very good perspective. So I completed those books. Okay. Thank you, Junaid. Uh, Junaid, <coughs> what is the meaning of your name? Uh, sir, it 
means a soldier or a warrior and what is the meaning of mujahideen a mujahid is a person who fight for the religious cause it's also a soldier but junaid particularly is uh, the soldier he has to fight the evils which is uh, within himself that's what junaid uh, means that and uh, what is the meaning of jihad jihad is uh, fighting for the right cause and uh, in the general parlance uh, this term has got a, a bad name because jihad particularly is about this thing only the bad things which are there within you you have to fight with them and then the other part is there that if something wrong is there happening you have to stand against that also recently there has also been some controversy about uh, the uh, spelling of the word ramzan and uh, nowadays it is being written as ramadan so what is the difference and why is it uh, which is the correct pronunciation uh, sir it is about uh, uh, the saudi influence because of which this word is being changed into ramadan indian muslims uh, they have a very different culture uh, which has evolved uh, here in india only but now when influence of uh, wahhabism and saudi influence is coming up because of that the, these small small things are coming up it is about the pronunciation how we pronounce these words there they say it ramadan and we call it ramadan and ramzan also has some persian influence sorry sir right now okay uh, uh tell me like uh, in a democracy it is said that it is a rule of the majority and but it is also said that democracy also means respecting the minority rights so if one has to choose between the two uh, what will you choose sir i'll say it's not uh, a binary that what we have to choose if we see our constitution the fundamental rights which are given they give rights to every individual every section of society minorities article 26 to 31 is there uh, so that uh, certain rights of them could be protected and along with that uh, the rights for every individual is there from article 14 to 23 24 so we cannot say that uh, what can be selected in between two both of them are equally important uh, it is said that intolerance is rising in india so do you think we should have tolerance for intolerance or intolerance for intolerance i'll say there should be acceptance uh, intolerance happens uh, when one idea is not being as- accepted by the other person or because of the ignorance of the other person uh, we i think there should be a platform where in uh, these ideas should be brought in and let people decide what is the right thing if there is no communication between the communities there is no platform to say what they really feel about the other community or the person that creates problem so if we can give platform then these things can. Uh, okay junaid uh, tell me in this arab spring it started with a lot of fanfare but it has almost fizzled out and even in countries where some changes were brought about status quo has been restored so what is the reason for this so the arab spring uh, which emerged in tunisia it started uh, a person who was uh, a police official who was there and he he, he did something the reasons the for person. like uh, it fizzling out so the ideas for which it came up the individual rights uh, popular government sovereignty the people looked upon on the western institutions and they feel that uh, the people they are more Uh, they have more freedom the accountability of government is more so with these things uh, the arab spring came but uh, la- in the later phases in the later period uh, the governments who came into power uh, on these uh, things they were not able to provide uh, the solution to the problem because of that why are the middle east countries very much wary of this uh, muslim brotherhood sir uh, muslim brotherhood uh, they feel that most of the countries are moving to, uh, towards moderate islam if we talk about saudi arabia uh, the prince he is saying that we want a moderate islam and liberalism in their country but uh, muslim brotherhood uh, they are more of an orthodox uh, institution and they feel that uh, the past glory which was there of the muslim world that need to be restored and they did pro- problems in egypt and other part so people, uh, the countries feel that uh, so if one has to make a choice between the uh, monarchical setup of uh, saudi arabia 
and this Muslim Brotherhood, which is a better option, or both options are not good? Sir, in the current times, if I'll say, both both have certain problems, but in the current system, if I say how the the prince is working upon in the government, he is trying to make it more uh, liberal, more accountable to the people. Can we say that the prince is a champion of human rights? Uh, no, not at all, sir. Uh, he, recently, he was involved in a controversy of uh, killing of Jamal Khashoggi and uh, uh, the generalists, they are not given freedom there. But he is working upon certain things like women rights, women are allowed to drive there and uh, those small, small changes are coming up. But we cannot say that he is a champion of human Thank you. Sir. Zunaid, you must have heard of terrorist attacks on mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand. Yes, sir. The prevailing situation, world situation, with uh, all kinds of hatred, jingoism, where do you see this world after 10 years? Sir, it's a cycle, I'll say. Uh, the globalization, it unleashed a wave of migration. Uh, borders were open and people moved into different parts. And uh, uh, a backlash came in where the original communities they felt is some problematic thing is there with these migrants but uh, for things to come up uh, there should be uh, like a discussion or debate on these things now people are debating at least these things that w what is wrong happening uh, whether migrants are good or not these things are coming up so i don't think that in 10 years uh, the world will be in a bad phase these things will get solved and they'll get fizzled and we will be better placed than you what are we quite are today. Uh, optimistic about the future of uh, yes, the world. Sir. Okay, thank you very much, Junaid. Your interview is over. You. May go now. Come, Junaid, sit. Thank you, sir. So, how was it? It is good. Some areas I could have done better. Uh, when is your uh, interview? 28th of March, sir. To eight. 28. 28 yes. Last time uh, you got very good marks, I believe, in uh, the interview. Uh, yes, 190. 190 you got. So, which uh, you uh, this theory pulled you down or what? Yes, sir. geography optional. Geography. Uh, this time, how have you fared compared to last year? Uh, sir, I am hoping it was better. So the interview has been excellent. Your entire personality is such a pleasing personality, such a the total demeanor is so good Thank you. and very soft spoken person which is which is very rare to get uh, so very very soft spoken words flow like uh, river so that way so three four parameters are there because you are as you are already a member of the civil services already in class one service so you have to go for betterment yes. so you know the equations so clarity of expression is there in you there is absolutely no doubt about it. Then the second uh, uh, parameter which your personality will be judged is a grasp of narrative and argument. Yes, sir. We didn't find you lacking in that also. Third is your reasoning ability, excellent reasoning ability as far as we could notice. Then appreciation of different points of view. Yes, sir. That also appreciation is very good in you. And Awareness and concern for socio-economic problems. So we asked you questions on that. Yes, sir. And we found your answers quite satisfactory. So uh, and range and depth of uh, interest that has been covered already, and uh, your performance has been excellent. Thank you, sir. So if you ask me to give you my remarks or any suggestions, just take it easy and do your best. Thank you, sir. Okay, all the best. All the best. <laughs>